The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching, 339, Love Each Other. 1. You come to me with a prepared spirit, full of humility and meekness to knock at the doors of the one who is eternal love and forgiveness to ask for your children, and you eagerly await a word that will ease your pain that will answer your complaints or to make light in your darkness to feel happy. Two, I contemplate you coming from different paths, each one fulfilling a different destiny, but all in pursuit of the same end, seeking to identify you with me to feel close to perfection. And you receive my word with joy that at the same time caresses and corrects you. You are interpreting it in its true sense and you begin to love me with purity. You no longer fear me as you did in other times, because today you know that I am love and perfect justice, that I do not punish you, and that it is you who you should fear, because you weaken and fall into serious errors that later you have to cry and repair at a very high price. And this experience makes you live watching to avoid stumbling blocks that disturb the spirit and cause bitterness. 3. Anyone who has thus understood is right. You are not doing works of the utmost perfection, but you are on the way to do them because you are my disciples. The light has dispelled your doubts. The fortress has defeated by weakness and trust leads you to give yourselves with true love to the fulfillment of your destiny. 4. You are penetrating insensibly on the spiritual path in the life of simplicity and purity that I have asked of you, and you feel satisfied in this new life. You no longer wonder why I have returned to you or if my word points a new path for you. Today you know that what I told you in the second era was not all that I was to teach you, that the lesson was not concluded, and that I had reserved a time of grace for you in which I would resume my teachings to show you the path that leads to spiritual life, true communication with me, and the explanation of my words given in that time when I lived among you and that have not yet been understood. 5. Meditate and you will come to understand that neither in the first nor in the second era were you able to understand, feel, and believe such a great lesson. But I, who own time and eternity, have taken you by your hand along the path of life with great patience and wisdom, without any haste, and today you have penetrated in a new era. 6. Behold the time of the Holy Spirit close to reaching its fullness, the time of the great revelations and justice, in which the veils of many mysteries will be torn to be all light and clarity. 7. I have opened your eyes so that you can go beyond what you have known and can enter into my treasury, because I, the Father, am not a mystery to my children. I want to be known and loved by you in a perfect and full way as I love you. I have not yet been loved and revered as it belongs to me, and you do not know how much joy would you give my spirit for a moment of understanding and compliance with the law. 8. Since your advent on earth, you have had my manifestations within the reach of your understanding but your understanding when you took the first steps on the path of evolution, it was very small, like the child is small when it is born. I had to limit myself to be seen and to be heard so that you could understand me. Nine, I did not fully manifest myself in the early days because your reason would have been disturbed and your whole being would have felt broken. That is why I have prepared you through long ages, and I have placed you at the beginning of the path to travel it step by step, and thus you reach the stage where you can better understand and love your father. 10. 
in all times I have sent to this world emissaries who have spoken of the survival of the spirit, of his immortality and the higher life that it reaches when it has reached perfection. From the first days in which man inhabited the earth, showing signs of innocence, as in those of greatest sin, and now in these of materialism and false science, my spiritual messengers have given proof of the high degree of elevation in which the spirit lives, that it has known how to keep it in constant communication with its Lord. 11. But the emissaries of the early days did not know how to explain to humanity the great stages that it goes through in the spirit and its life in the hereafter. The patriarchs who knew how to preserve themselves in virtue, in love for their creator, they were determined to lead their family, their tribe or people along the path of justice and righteousness. And although they had the knowledge of the existence of their spiritual universal God, the intuition of a superior life for the spirit in the hereafter, with all its light and virtue, they could not reveal the path of evolution of the spirit and the reason for his great tests. 12. The prophets spoke with great truth. They almost always came to earth in times of confusion and going astray admonishing the peoples, inviting them to repentance and amendment, announcing great trials of justice if they did not return to the good, and other times predicting blessings for the observance and obedience to the divine law. But what those prophets spoke was an exhortation to the practices of good, justice, and respect for each other. They did not come revealing the life of the spirit, its destiny, and its evolution and not even Moses himself, whom I chose to make him my representative and through him I gave the law for all times. Not even he spoke of the spiritual life. 13. The law of the Father contains wisdom and justice. It teaches man to live in peace, love, and respect each other and make themselves worthy before me as men. But Moses did not show mankind what lies beyond the threshold of bodily death, nor what is the restitution of disobedient spirits, or the reward for the prudent and diligent of their mission. 14. David then reigned, full of gifts and inspiration, and in his moments of elevation, in his ecstasies, he listened to hymns and spiritual songs with which he formed the Psalms with which he was to invite the people of Israel to pray and to give to his Lord the best offering of his heart. And David, with all his love and inspiration, couldn't reveal to the people the wonderful existence of spirits, their evolution, and their goal. 15. And Solomon who succeeded him in the reign and who also demonstrated the great gifts of wisdom and power that had been granted to him, for which he was loved and admired, and even today his advice, his judgments and proverbs. If his people had approached him to ask, Sir, how is the spiritual life? What lies beyond death? What is spirit? Solomon, with all his wisdom, could not have answered. 16. But truly I tell you, Moses with his zeal and obedience, the prophets with their warnings, the patriarchs with their examples, the counselors, the wise men, and the judges with their sound advice and good judgments left you an example so that by following it you would make your first steps be firm from this earth in the way to the promised land of the hereafter. You should begin by practicing good in this world. You had to be fair among yourselves to find justice on earth. Here you found the fruit or the harvest of your farm. This abode was for the man in those times a reflection, an image of the eternal life of the spirit. 17. Later 
the Messiah came becoming man to open a new time and give humanity a new lesson in which he had to make great revelations to him to tell him, you are the children of light and become my disciples. Truly I tell you that everything you see that I do, you can do it in the Father's name. And truly the Messiah in whom my spirit was manifested brought the key to open the doors of the second age and the power to untie the seals that close the book of life, of wisdom, of justice and eternity. 18. Before his arrival, I allowed the world of men to be visited by the spirit world. Spirits of light and great elevation stirred around the master and also those of low elevation. Some and others were present at that time. The first manifested as humble servants, full of submission. Among them was the one who announced to Mary his high destiny of conceiving in her most pure bosom the word of the Father. Another visited the shepherds of Bethlehem to give them the news of the birth of the Savior. And another emissary, he warned the Holy Family of the danger that threatened, guided, and protected them in the flight to Egypt. 19. Many demonstrations were watched at that time with joy and faith of many, and others, the reluctant and disbelievers for the spiritual life, doubted and denied this truth. But my spiritual host that were unleashed, they were attracted by the light that the master radiated. 20. Beings of light at the service of the divine work and other rebellious and ignorant arose everywhere, and appearing among that humanity were the possessed, whom science failed to liberate and were repudiated by the people. Neither the doctors of the law nor the scientists succeeded in restoring the sick to health. 21. But everything was arranged by me to teach you and give you proofs of love, and I granted you through the Messiah the healing of those creatures to the amazement of many. The unbelievers, those who had heard of the power of the Messiah and they knew about his miracles, they looked for the most difficult test to make him hesitate for a moment and demonstrate that he was not infallible. And this liberation of the possessed the fact of returning them to their state of normal beings with just a touch or look at them or address them a word of order so that those spiritual beings would abandon their mind and both were released from their heavy burden, it confused the former. Faced with this power, the Pharisees, scientists, scribes, and publicans had different reactions. Some recognized the power of the Messiah. Others attributed his power to strange influences. Others could not say anything, but the sick who had been healed blessed his name. Some had been possessed by a single spirit, others by seven, like Mary of Magdala, and others by such a large number that they themselves claimed to be a legion. 22. Throughout the Master's life, spiritual manifestations followed one another. Some were seen by the twelve disciples, others were the people on the roads, in their homes. It was a time of wonders, of many wonders. Men and women perceived signs and voices from the hereafter. The elderly and children also witnessed these manifestations, and in the days before the death of the Redeemer, the heavenly light penetrated the heart of humanity. The beings of the spiritual valley called the hearts of men, and the day when the Master, as man, breathed his last, his light penetrated all material and spiritual dwellings in search of beings who had been waiting for him for a long time. Materialized, disturbed, and sick beings, lost from the road, bound with chains of regret, dragging bundles of iniquity, and other spirits believed they were dead and were attached to his body. All came out of their slumber and rose to life, but before leaving this earth, they went to give testimony of his resurrection, of his existence, to those who had belonged, and with all this, 
the world witnessed these manifestations on that night of mourning. The men's hearts trembled and children wept before those who had long since died. And that day they returned only for an instant to bear witness to that master who having descended to earth to spread his seed of love at the same time he cultivated the spiritual fields inhabited by countless spirits also his children he healed them and freed them from their ignorance 23 the knowledge of these truths spread from generation to generation and the apostles went through the roads of the world opening the eyes of that sleeping humanity showing the path that leads to a life superior opening a gap towards the beyond and teaching the doctrine of his master they also freed the possessed they healed the sick not only of the body but of the spirit they knew how to relieve and look with pity on both those who inhabit this world like those who live in an invisible world felt the pain of one another because for the one who loves there is no foreign or distant pain the one who prepares knows how to perceive the complaint the need where they are and these disciples taught others to succeed them in the fulfillment of its mission on earth 24 I allowed these manifestations so that the world would meditate and know that the spirit does not die, that its life is eternal, and that in whatever abode where he lives, he has his path outlined, his duties have been indicated, and has before him one more mission to fulfill. 25. I myself returned after the crucifixion to bear witness to my truth and to overcome the disbelief of humanity and even among my disciples I had to present myself to show that I am life and my life is in all creation. I made those followers of mine see me and their fingers touch me to make them come out of their grief because there was confusion in them after my work was completed on Golgotha and it was necessary for my presence to comfort and revive them. But this was not the whole meaning of that fact. It was a foretaste of my new coming, a lesson of profound meaning that I gave you when I appeared in spirit to the amazement and rejoicing of those beloved disciples. Then they knew that a time would come when I would come like this to explain everything and bring you a new message. 26. Thus I said to you at that time, what I have told you is not all that I have to teach you, so that you know everything. First I will have to go to send you the spirit of truth, to clarify what I have said and what I have done. I promise the comforter in times of trial. And that comforter, that explainer, it is I who return to enlighten you and help you understand the past lessons and this new lesson that I now bring you. 27. I am the one who has opened the third era so that you, penetrating deep study, know of all my manifestations and understand the knowledge of my revelations. 28. In the second era, during the years that I lived in this world, I was surrounded by events, spiritual facts, and creatures, and all this spoke of the importance of that stage, of the realization of my promises, made since the beginning of time to the much-loved humanity. And now that I bring you one more lesson, and I make you know the spiritual life, I come to give you faculties and gifts so that you become spiritual doctors and be in that path tireless sowers, teachers of true wisdom. And so in this mission, I have given in the first place the people of Israel to be the one who teaches the other peoples. 29. Humanity today, as great as you consider it in number, is very small compared to the world of spiritual beings that surrounds it. And with what force these legions invade the paths of men, and these they do not perceive, do not feel or hear that world that is stirring around them. 
30. I prepare you, my disciples, to make every spirit light, so that you may be of one another true friends, brothers, counselors, and doctors, and your intuition will tell you who are close to you and what are your needs, your mission, or restitution. But you, busy in this great work, will respect and you will love the destiny that I have indicated to each being, and you will not penetrate into sciences that make you descend from the high place where my charity has placed you. 31. You are no longer ignorant. Today you walk firmly, because long ago you began your work. Since the days of the patriarchs and of the prophets, and later in those of Moses, when you were led and advised wisely, all your actions, prayers, and words are written and are reflected in the Spirit. They were the principle that made you worthy of receiving my first great revelations and also my adventures. 32. My communication at this time will not be sterile, and for those who have heard me and have taken advantage of my teaching, it will be a treasure in good tasting fruits. By ceasing to manifest myself through man, I will leave my witnesses, my disciples, who will continue to work, and later from the bosom of this people, I will make new generations of sowers who will multiply this seed. 33. I invite you to return to the happy days of the patriarchs. Imagine for a moment you doing a virtuous and simple life like that, in which peace, happiness, and sweetness reigned. Evoke the times of fortune that man, by his faith and virtue, knew how to keep himself healthy and strong in spirit and matter, and knew to represent me in justice, energy, and strength. Those times when women are also full of virtues, tenderness, moral strength, beauty in her spirit and in her body. She was a lap and cradle, a source of goodness and example of mercy to your children, husband and parents. 34. Remember those times when the roof of some was extended to shelter others, when there was hospitality and charity, love and respect. When you relive those days and make the desire to love yours and serve the like one, to make the peace of your people propitious, the peace of your heart and of your home, I will invite other peoples to participate in that joy. And there in your company, they will find brotherhood and friendship in your heart, sincerity. Under your roof, they will find honesty and morality at your table blessings and in your word light and truth and after those peoples yearning for peace have penetrated into your bosom and participated in your spiritual ideal they will return to their lands for their long or short paths bearing in an instant an example of spirituality and truth the desire to imitate you will arise in them because among you they found the secret of peace, of health, of joy that you have found in compliance with my laws and in spirituality, which is simplicity, elevation, and truth in all acts. 35. Do you see this humanity struggling with its uncertainty and pain? Do you feel that mantle of sorrow? of sad omens that surround your planet? The Master tells you, that world that has no knowledge of my new coming, nor does he live inspired by my word, how distant he feels from spiritual life, but also it will be enough for his enlightenment, a test, a call, for him to become and recognize that the only mission that his spirit brings to earth it is to perfect itself through the test that I send it. 36. Many will penetrate into this great truth until they have left their body on earth and transpose the thresholds of that valley that awaits everyone. 
Humanity is one step away from that knowledge. The veils will be broken and everyone's eyes will open to find themselves in front of the treasury. And this world that you contemplate of its vast continents, its seas as vast as its deserts too, its roads so long, its men so impenetrable to you, their races so incomprehensible, will be defeated by a doctrine, by a word, for a revelation. But this will not leave traces of blood, death, or pain. 37. Man will be enlightened by a word that will devour like the fire, but that fire will be of love, and the trail that will leave in its wake will be of life, of health, of consolation, and of peace. This doctrine is my law, my word, and my eternal work that once again I offer to my children and will emerge with force from the hearts of all because it is written in each spirit and its stamp is indelible. 38. What will the beginning of this work be like and how will this knowledge reach men? I have arranged everything in perfect form, a large part I take charge of, but to you and my spiritual host do participants in this work, as well as my invoice, to whom I have entrusted countless missions so that they rise up like legions of light to carry this revelation and explanation of the spiritual manifestations that are verified in the past times and in the present era in which very few have glimpsed its significance and that light will reach everyone without distinction of class or race because you will not stop for fear of judgment or punishment of unbelievers 39 i will give you the order to get up to work because it will be a time of such great and clear signs that you will hear the voice of the spiritual world and the voice of this world that with its events will be signaling that the hour of your fight has arrived. I will speak to you spirit to spirit and guide you on the way, but I want that before you reach humanity as teachers, you arrive as doctors and once you have her sorrow calmed, she will be able to drink at the source the pure waters of my word. Seek first the wound, the sore or sickness, and heal her pains, so that later you can reach her spirit. 40. Go to your brothers, like the Messiah in the second era, taking before my word the balm and, what is the balm, O disciples? Perhaps the water of the springs blessed and transformed into medicine for the sick? No, people. That balm of which I speak is in your heart. There I have deposited it as precious essence, and only love can open it to flow like a torrent. When you want to spill it on some sick person, it will not be your hands that anoint, but the spirit flooded with love, charity, and consolation. And wherever you direct your thoughts, the miracle will happen. 41. On the beings and elements of nature, you can act in multiple ways to bring to all the comfort. But I also say to you, do not fear diseases and thirst. With all be patient and merciful. As for the possessed and the confused in their human mind, you can also heal them because you have that faculty and you must put it at the service of those beings who have fallen into despair and oblivion. Release them and manifest that power before unbelievers. It is one of the great missions of this people. Bring the light where there is darkness, break all slavery and all injustice, and prepare this world to contemplate its Lord and look at yourself inside with full knowledge of the truth. 42. To those who, believing they belong to this world, live troubled and confused in their spirit, help them with love to get out of his big mistake. Do not use violence, 
but fill your heart with tenderness and compassion to treat all beings. 43. Have you not brought light and comfort to those troubled beings? Yes, the Master tells you. Since I gave you this knowledge, you have illuminated the path of those creatures. But how great must be your faith and prayer so that you convert those spirits. 44. The fight in which the darkness will be brought down has already been fought from one world to another. The great battle is in the universe and it is necessary for man to convince himself of it so that he can wield his weapons. While the world prepares and enters the final test that the light will give it, you pray, watch, and take the balm to all of those in need. Go to them in your prayer and protect them under your spiritual mantle, that when you are pouring out your being in love, I will be enveloping the entire universe in my spirit. 45. Pray, people. Do not falter for a single moment before the approach of my departure. Strengthen yourselves in my word and watch for the peace of the nations. 46. Don't even try to know who you were yesterday and who you will be tomorrow. Just think that you were, that you are, and that you will be, and that you will come to me by the path that I have traced for you, that you are the spirit of Israel, the chosen people to hold high positions within my work. Work so that you achieve peace on earth and glory in the hereafter. My peace be with you.